Hello and welcome to the video lecture series brought to you by SIT Interviews Institute of Technology and Management. And we are going to discuss the subject called Programming for Problem Solving Using the Language C. Okay, so I'm going to start with the very basic idea of what an algorithm is. Okay, so Let's suppose before going on to writing a code or before uh, starting on to uh, program your application in, a, any, in any particular language, you must go through a design phase. Design phase is, uh, that is, uh, if you want to provide solution to a particular problem, uh, that is, uh, you are going to provide the solution by writing your... Uh, okay. Okay, so what I'm saying is, uh, before going on providing the solution or writing a solution in a particular language for, uh, in in any language or in the in your computer, you must have an idea how to solve that particular problem. Okay, suppose uh, in your daily life you want to, uh, let's say, calculate uh, if the percentage of your class or the average, if uh, let's say you are the teacher of the class and you want to see if the average percentage of students have passed or not, or the total uh, average percentage, pass percent of, of the class is above 50% or not. Okay. Now you want to, you don't want to do this manually and you want to perform this particular task by writing a code in any particular language or any language that you know in your system. And then your system will automatically generate the solution that if the class passing percentage is above 50 or not. But before writing that particular code, you must have some idea how to solve that particular problem. Okay. Your computer, I think, don't know how to solve that how or how to calculate the passing percentage of or the average passing percentage of all the class or for, or for the whole class. Uh, that is that idea is actually being written by you in the form of any language syntax for your computer but that syntax is just a language like the like your daily speaking language of english or hindi or whatever do you in language you use do you speak okay now what you are speaking is the content that is being generated by your mind the language is just an medium to uh, medium for communication uh, for communicating or the idea of communication between the two uh, let's say individuals or between the two spots okay so language is just a medium of communication and nothing else like in your daily life if you use english as medium of communication uh, what i am trying to say to you in this particular lecture is i am trying to convey to you what are my thoughts or on the idea of algorithm but the content of what I am saying is actually generated or I have pre-thought uh, what I am trying to say to you or what I am going to say to you in this particular lecture has been generated by me uh, or I have thought of it before. Okay. So similar is the case with the systems or the computers. Uh, you want to write a solution to a particular problem, but you don't if you don't know how to solve that particular problem, then writing anything or writing any kind of syntax will be of no use. Okay. In your computer domain also, all the languages are just a medium to com communicate uh, between human beings or the user and the system. So human beings or the user know how to write the syntax of a particular uh, language and that particular language is actually understood by the your computer and what you have told your computer to, to do in the form of the syntax uh, your computer will actually perform that uh, that particular thing okay according to what you have written but if you don't know of you or if you haven't thought through what to actually write in that syntax then writing anything or knowing any kind of uh, let's say language will be of no use if you don't know what to speak okay so what you are going to uh, 
provide to your system as a solution is actually called an implementation of algorithms okay so algorithms is basically a blueprint for any solution in your even in your day to day life if you try to find out a solution in a stepwise stepwise manner let's say uh, like in the case of the uh, trying to find out the average pass percentage if you try to let's say uh, try to calculate uh, how many number of students uh, are passed in a particular exam in a particular subject exam and then you will find out the total number of students in the class and then you will try to divide that and in that way uh, you will find out the passing percentage i may not be correct mathematically but i am just trying to give you an idea what i am trying to say okay so we have in the, in the last example a few seconds ago that i have given you i have uh, i have walked step by step first i will find out how many total number of students are there in the class then i will try to find out how many of them are passed in a particular subject then i will try to implement some mathematical function to find out the the percentage of students that are passed okay so i am driving myself step by step to find the last lasting solution to find out the optimal answer for my problem that is what is the total pass percentage of the class in a particular subject so that step by step uh, uh let's say explanation to of the solution of a particular problem is actually called an algorithm itself okay so let's move ahead to the slides okay so what is an algorithm algorithm is just a set of rules to obtain the expected output from the given input now what i have shown here is that i have written an algorithm which accepts some kind of input and then i will that particular algorithm will if properly implemented in some form will actually give me the finished product like in this case uh, just we have discussed i have devised an algorithm to find out what is the pass percentage of a class in a particular subject so the input would be how many students have actually passed in that particular subject and what are the total number of students in that particular class so that these two numbers will be the input and after writing this algorithm in a per, in a uh, any language that you want uh, obviously it's it's going to be a computer language if you want to uh, perform your solution or write an application to do, to implement this particular algorithm so if you try to write that particular algorithm or implement that particular algorithm uh, by writing syntax in any computer language and that uh, particular code or application will accept input as the total number of students and number of students that have passed in a particular subject it will provide us with the output that is what is the total pass percentage of the students in that subject okay so this is the basic idea of the algorithm so let's move ahead okay before uh okay so what are what what must be the characteristics of an algorithm the first first thing first uh like human beings computers must also be clearly defined about all the present uh let's say scenarios and all the present uh, members which must be taken care of to find the solution to a particular problem so what i am saying is it must have uh inside an algorithm all the inputs must be clearly defined and all the outputs must be clearly defined because your system doesn't know what kind of input it is expecting if you don't clearly define it okay the computer doesn't look at you and tell you that okay you are a human being or you are something else uh, some else living being or what you have to tell him you have to tell your system by writing syntax or writing code that what kind of inputs you must expect or you are going to need to find the solution to this particular problem okay now as you know 
that algorithm is actually the blueprint of the syntax so that algorithm must also include the clear definition of your inputs and outputs always okay by inputs and out outputs or the definition of input outputs i mean what kind of inputs that is either you are telling uh, your system to have some integer values or some float values or some uh, let's say a line in english language that is called strings and what kind of output your system must uh, display to you or not display but uh, what kind of output you can expect from your application so your system must know what kind of output you are expecting out of it so uh, let's say if you're expecting the pass percentage of the class and if your system is actually showing you uh, let's say uh, as uh, the systems language is, a, is the binary language and it is showing you the, the binary equivalent of that percentage. So I think most of you will not be able to understand what it is trying to say or what is that actual number. So your system or your application must clearly know what kind of output it is. It must, uh, it must display or must output uh, so that the user can understood it easily or it must or it can be used further down the process okay next is uh, the algorithm must be clear and add unambiguous that is the algorithm must be clear enough to fit all the possible scenarios okay all the possible scenarios and it must be clear of what it is trying to do or how it is trying to find the solution now next characteristic is finiteness it means your algorithm must not take an infinite amount of time to solve a particular problem it must be finite or it must take finite amount of time okay next is it must be language independent so uh, by this a particular characteristic what we are trying to say here is that your algorithm uh, must be such that uh, you can after implementing or after writing or uh, the algorithm for a particular problem uh, you would be able to write the syntax for that algorithm or if you uh, you'll, you must be able to implement that particular problem in any language that is being devised to communicate with your system so your algorithm must be language independent you your algorithm must be such that uh, it could be implemented in any of the languages that is java python c julia javascript or some other language okay so your algorithm must be universal in nature and last is it must be feasible that is your algorithm must uh, should be of the kind of the idea or the algorithm must be an idea that is feasible okay there are several uh, let's say small small members to the to the principle of feasibility so we'll see what is what i mean by feasibility in the coming lectures i will tell you again but for now you must see it, include that in your the list of characteristics so let's move ahead and on. Now this is the basic characteristics or uh, the few points about the algorithm. Uh, first, the basic definition: it is a step-by-step -step procedure to solve a particular problem. And one thing, your algorithm is always written at the design time. Okay. So what I am trying to say here is: suppose you want to uh, create an application, like just we have we are discussing that particular example from the beginning of the lecture, uh, how to find out the passing percentage in a class. Okay, so uh, you can see that uh, by what by saying that what I'm trying to say is uh, that before writing the actual code for your application in any language that you want of or of your choice, it its algorithm must be devised. So algorithm is actually thought of at the design time, and your code is actually implemented at the time of implementation 
or it has been written at the time of implementation. Okay. Now next is uh, algorithms must be hardware independent. Uh, in the last slide, I have told you that algorithms uh, must be language independent. Now I have written here that algorithms must be hardware independent. It means that algorithms must not be dependent on the kind of system that you are using. That is, may uh, for example, for example, let's say. Uh, I'm using the operating system called Windows. Uh, maybe you are using the operating system called Linux and some other kid may be using the operating system called uh, Macintosh or the Mac. Uh, so your algorithm must be designed like it could be implemented in any of the platforms. Okay, irrespective of the hardware and the software or the language. Okay. Now next, your algorithms not believe when you write a code in your system or, for, or you write a code for your application that you want to perform, your algorithm uh, or your sorry or your code is analyzed by running it with through different types of inputs. Okay. So uh, actually what I'm trying to say here is if you have devised an algorithm then before actually implementing it you must find out if it is working or not or your idea is working or not. That is if it is feasible or not, uh, it is platform independent or not, it is language independent or not, if it is finite, its finiteness is there or not. So these, all of these things are actually analyzed for its performance and there are several ways to analyze this kind of uh, performances like the time complexity and the space complexity. That is the time taken by algorithm to do a particular task or the actual memory that it it, it is going to uh, let's say use for uh, performing a particular or uh, performing a particular task or providing solution for a particular task. So algorithms are actually analyzed for their performance in the design phase itself. Okay, so let's move ahead. Now, uh, I have already provided you with this definition called it is a step by step description of a calculation. Or you can do step by step discussion of a problem uh, of or uh, solution of a problem. Now we have a, a definition written here called pseudo code. Now your algorithm. I'm trying to say we have to write the algorithm. We have to write the algorithm from the beginning of the of this lecture. But I haven't told you how to write that particular. Uh, let's say how to write the particular algorithm. Is it going to be written in some kind of other language that you must know or is it going to be written in some uh, kind of let's say uh, mathematics or some kind of pre-existing languages that English, Hindi or some computer language or something else. So algorithms are represented by two ways. One is pseudocode and other is let me show you flowchart. Okay. So pseudocode is a high level description of an algorithm and it can be converted to an application or program very easily. Okay. So I will show you the pseudocode in the next lecture where we are where, uh, where going to see the pseudocode of a particular problem as well as we are going to see uh, as well as we are going to see the flow chart of that particular particular problem. For now, what all I can show you that this is actually an algorithm before you. And I have written this algorithm where I have shown you an example of this algorithm in the form of a flow chart. So the process is, has been continued, uh, will start from the beginning. That is your algorithm will start from the beginning and you, if possible, depending on your input, you will get a solution and your algorithm will actually stop. Okay. So I'll end this lecture now and in the next lecture, we'll discuss about the pseudocode and the flowchart with an example. Thank you.